Hey, it's Joel Davis, wide receiver for Bethune Cookman. You are here listening to On the Fence Side. It ain't the left side or the right side, and it must be the fence side. side. It ain't the left side. Thank you, Solo D. Welcome to another episode of On the Fence Side here with Kat and Paul Pickin. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, and on iHeartRadio. Paul and I are continuing to drill down into very big needs for the Dolphins position by position. This, I believe, was Paul's top need at the tight end spot. It was a little further down there on my needs list only because, you know, I think the Dolphins could conceivably get a blocker and call it a day, maybe re-sign Anthony Fasano. But taking a look at their depth chart now, yeah, pretty barren. I mean, you've got Marquise Gray, who didn't get a lot of action last year. A.J. Derby, who the Dolphins acquired off waivers later late last season. And Thomas Duarte, a player who's barely – has actually been cut a couple of times, if I'm recalling correctly, has been on the practice squad, has bounced around. This is probably a put-up-or-shut-up kind of year for him. But there really is no – Kellen Winslow, Eric Ebron, Tyler Eifert type of prospect in the first round this year, Paul, and that we're probably not going to see anybody in the top 15. I agree with you. Tight end is one of those weird positions this year when you look at the prospects, though, because if you look at a lot of the mock drafts out there, you have everything from no tight end going in round one to potentially two or three of them going at the back end of round one, some of whom – other experts have not going until round three. I mean, you look at like Hayden Hurst, for example, he's a guy that you have folks projecting everywhere from the 21st overall pick to, you know, halfway through the third round. There's definitely a lot of pick your flavor with this year's draft class, but there are a few bright and shining stars, I think among it. And I think this could be a position that Miami could really have, as I actually put it out there on Twitter, a chance to double down at the position throughout this draft and have that Gronk, Aaron Hernandez, minus the whole murder thing draft out there that really could just become electric in Miami's offense with Ryan Tannehill. That'd be an interesting direction to go in. I mean, um, if they were to go tight end, say, in the second round and the fourth round, even though they'd be doubling down, man, you look at wide receiver and tight end, and you probably don't have to touch that position for years. And you threw a couple of names out there, Paul. Hayden Hurst is one of them. actually saw a mock draft from Todd McShay, who actually had him going as high as 16th to Baltimore. He's an interesting name. I think that would be a good pick all day for the Dolphins at 42. He's a, he's a good blocker. He's well-rounded. He's creative after the catch. And the big – iffy thing with Hayden Hurst is because of his baseball career he's actually going to be 25 in August and when you you're comparing him to guys who in the draft here who are sometimes 20 21 22 years old that can take a few years off his career but my number one guy and yours is too is Dallas Goddard the tight end out of South Dakota State I mean and it's not just because he's a he's a very good athlete he's 6'5 260 looks like a a monster out there. Maybe it's because of the level of competition, but dominated his level over 2,400 receiving yards the last two years and 18 touchdowns at South Dakota State. I think he needs to be a little more refined in his route running, but he is somebody who can put his hand in the ground and be that sixth offensive lineman as he learns the position more, Paul. Completely. And he's, he's a guy that anybody that's listened to our show knows I absolutely love in this draft. Almost every single mock draft I have, I've taken him in the second round. He just is electric on, in both facets of what you need from a tight end. As you pointed out, he can put his hand in the dirt. He's probably the second best blocking tight end in this year's draft, if not the best. And on top of that, he's a guy that you watch him on some place. He's getting submarine and still manages to stick one of those massive hands up in the air and pull the ball down to the catch. Uh, he's very good with the ball after, or running after the catch. He's very good at breaking tackles. And he's got deceptive speed. He doesn't look like he's running fast, but he has a tendency to pull away from defenders. We'll see if that's true at the next level. But he's just an all-around tight end that can really give defenses fits because you're going to have to account for him in the passing game. And he may be staying in the block, which opens things up for, say, Jakeem Grant or Kenny Stills over the top, for Albert Wilson 
running the same route over the middle that you would have expected. So he really could complete this Miami offense. Yeah, and assuming the Dolphins don't draft a quarterback in the first round, they may, they may not. If they can, say, get a safety or a linebacker in the first round, and then in the second round draft a Gal- Dallas Goddard, man, I'm walking away from the draft already thinking this is at least a B-plus draft. In everything else is just icing on the cake. And when you look at Goddard, if Goddard, Hayden Hurst, and also to Mike Isecki is up there, but let, let's stay with Hurst and with Goddard. If you see one of them at the beginning of this second round, I could see Mike Tannenbaum pulling off the same trade he did a couple years ago, like when he traded a fourth round pick to move up several spots to really secure the guy that he wanted at a position that they badly needed. But yeah, if you come away with one of those tight ends in the second round, that's, that's a hit all day and very well planned by the dolphins too. Paul, the third guy that seems to be the consensus third tight end is Mike Gisecki. I know you're, you've always been a lot higher on him than me. Um, good receiving skills. I mean, has it just blew it out at the combine. Looks like that athlete. I'm, I, I have reservations about him as a blocker. Now, we did, we did a segment a, a little while ago on our, our second-round targets, and, and you had Gisecki in there, and I did not. You still feeling the same way on Gisecki? Is he somebody you'd consider at 42? I'd consider him, but honestly, I don't really want him for Miami's offense. Uh, the fact that he can't block, I won't even say I have concerns about it. He can't. Right. He just doesn't seem like a fit to me. For me, I'd, I'd almost rather they go after one of the later round tight ends that I think is a better fit for the offense and maybe more productive for Miami or at least make the players around him productive. Say like a Tyler Conklin, who I know you've mentioned a few times, Ian Thomas, one of those guys that can come in and be productive but also put their hand in the dirt. Yeah, and, and that's kind of the difference in these tight ends in this class because you've really got you, you've got Hurst and Goddard at the top, and then your third it seems to be Guy Uh Yeah, I'm talking about rate ranked from a consensus standpoint. Then your fourth and fifth tight ends are pretty well defined too. Mark Andrews out of Oklahoma, and Ian Thomas out of Indiana. Mark Andrews has some concerns as a blocker too, but I think he has the body type to be able to do it. At Oklahoma, I thought he was very smooth, and he's a better athlete and has better hands than people give him credit for. I, I see him being not quite as physical of a version of Travis Kelsey, but I think he's somebody who's going to get open in the pros, a smart, smooth player. Ian Thomas is interesting because he was a real late bloomer at Indiana, but this is a kid, a very good athlete, and he's six foot four, 270 pounds. He's got long arms. He can block. But he only had 32 catches at Indiana. He had four in 2016 and 28 in, in 2017. But then again, Antonio Gates didn't play college football. Jimmy Graham only had 17 catches. So it is a position where great college success doesn't necessarily dictate great NFL performance. But going back, Paul, to the, the rest of the tight ends here, you mentioned Tyler Conklin. A, a couple other guys to keep in mind, Chris Herndon, from Miami right here in state could be a consideration too. I think these are more fourth round types of guys for the Dolphins. Uh, Herndon would be somebody they'd probably consider, but if they don't, I got to be honest with you. I'm totally fine with them re-signing Anthony Fasano for another year and then maybe looking in the sixth or seventh round for somebody like Florida State's Ryan Izzo or Notre Dame's Durham Smythe these types of players because if if it's a blocker that they need for this offense and it might be because when you look at that Mike Martz philosophy that Adam Gase is probably going to embrace you may only need a, a blocker at tight end and Anthony Fasano has been one of the best in the business and could probably do that same thing this year too yeah and one guy that you could take a look at too if you're looking for a developmental prospect at tight end is is Jordan Thomas from Mississippi State I mean if nothing else, he is a massive body that's familiar with the position. The guy's 6'6", 280 pounds. So, I mean, if you're looking to develop somebody as a blocker and you, you've got a chip on your shoulder that you could teach them the technique, why not go for the most massive tight end in this draft class and, and see if you can teach him to put his hand in the dirt and bowl over one of these small defensive ends? Absolutely. And uh, a receiving threat in later rounds, too, he's actually – 
actually qualifies as a wide receiver, but I, I see him putting on some weight and moving to tight end, which could be interesting as uh, Alan Lazard from Iowa State. He's 6'5", 227, ran under a 4'6", doesn't separate all that well, not a surprise for one of those giant receivers, can block well as a wide receiver, so maybe you move him in closer to the line of scrimmage and he can be a little bit more of a seam threat. When you start getting down into the sixth round, to me, he would be a developmental steal that the Dolphins can take a look at, stash on the roster, maybe even on the practice squad too. So, Paul, are, are we all in for the Dolphins at tight end here in the second round? I'm more than all in on tight end in the second round. I, I'm I'm all in on Dallas Goddard in the second round. I think this may even be the scenario where instead of trying to accumulate a pick for Kiko Alonso, if Dallas Goddard's still on the board a few picks ahead of you, maybe you try to swap Kiko Alonso to swap picks. I mean, it's I'd be completely okay with giving up Kiko Alonso to get Dallas Goddard on this roster. I think he does a lot more to help this team, and you've probably already replaced him with that first-round pick. So, for me, I'm 100% in on Dallas Goddard in round two. I get a little leery about some of the other round two guys after that just because some of the ones that we've mentioned are probably just as good that you could get in the third or fourth round as what you're probably going to take if you're not taking Goddard, at least as far as fits for this offense. Well, if the Dolphins swapped one spot, needed to swap one spot for Kiko Alonso, I'd gladly do it. I'd probably trade down and get Kiko Alonso. So I, I, I hope these scenarios play out with Kiko um, and, and we unload some of that cap money there. So that will do it for our wrap-up at the tight end position, a big need for the Dolphins heading into the 2018 NFL Draft. You can follow Paul and I on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, and on iHeartRadio. And if it's not on the right side and it's not on the left side, it is on the thin side. Solo D, take us home. It ain't the left side or the right side, and it must be the thin side. Thin side. It ain't the left side, left side or the right, right side, side, and it must be the thin side. Listen, Dolphins.